Uh, well, hello there. My name is Mark Risen Hopkins, founding editor of SiliconANGLE. We're coming back at you uh, with more Google I.O. 2013 coverage, uh, separating the signal from the noise. Uh, we were walking through the, uh, the upstairs area here of uh, the, the, the show floor, and we came across something that piqued our interest. Obviously, we love video here at SiliconANGLE. Uh, we uh, came across We Video, and I'm, I'm speaking here with Lucian Chirogo from, uh, from We Video. And what's interesting about this, this is cloud-based uh, video rendering, and so you can use this on a number of different devices uh, that are, are mobile and cheap and uh, uh, ubiquitous. So now you don't need a, a special uh, video rendering box anymore uh, with We Video. So let's dive deep. Let's talk a little bit about what this product does. Maybe walk through uh, the kind of the three basic levels that you, you, you showed me earlier. Of course, I, I will just walk very easily on uh, on the on the levels that we support. So just to present the whole workflow, uh, this is how you see where after we get in the tool. Uh, the first part of the workflow is actually getting content there. So we support uploading your local content or importing uh, from any major media cloud the company. So we support Drive, Dropbox, Facebook, Instagram, whatever basically. And of course after you got your content in, in our cloud, uh, you can start editing your video. So the first thing that you will start to do probably as a beginner video editor is, is just use the normal storyboard uh, editing mode which is a simple slideshow based editor. You just put slides one after the other. Of course, you are able to, to arrange your stuff together. You are able to just adjust just a little bit, cut away the parts that you don't need. Uh, also add titles and all that stuff. But uh, things like transitions or overlays or color correction and all that stuff should be transparent for a beginner user. So what you would do in this situation is actually apply a theme to it. We have almost 30 themes, I think, I think there are actually 30, which just spice up the video. It just makes it a lot better. You know? So in this case, I would just apply the 1960 theme. You know? And you will see that something that was a bit maybe dull at, the, at first, just normal sync, it, it just gets a bit of flair, it just gets a bit of nice colors and all that stuff. And that just makes the whole experience a lot better. Uh, the cool part is that since I started talking, like two, maybe 30 seconds, so you, for a beginner, you're actually to, able to do this in a very simple way. Uh, obviously, most of our users are beginners, so this is why we're trying to offer them uh, some, something they can, they can relate to and something normal and easy to use. But we also have advanced users. And for advanced users, this is just not good enough for video editing. You probably know very well about that. Right. Okay, so for that, we are offering two more editing modes. One is the simple timeline mode. I will not get into it now, but I will show you the advanced timeline mode. For a Final Cut or Adobe Premiere users, this should feel a bit like home because we are supporting uh, several video layers, uh, not several. Uh, any number of video layers or any number of image layers and any number of, of sound and voiceover and stuff like this. And here you can actually start to be creative about your video. You can add your own transitions, which we have plenty of. You can add, uh, you can add like text and frames and animations and all that stuff, like overlays that you can put on top or frames or effects or all that. Or, or uh, for individual videos, you can go and uh, adjust the caption or uh, transform it a bit so I can go ahead let's say this video is, is being transformed, so I can go ahead and like move it around, you know, uh, yeah, make it bigger, flip it horizontally, and all that kind of transformations that you want to support, like picture in picture and all that. And yeah, after you're, after you're done with that, you're, you're able to play several videos on the, on the, so you can actually overlap videos and overlap with different sizes and different alphas. So here, for example, I think it kind of shows you, you get like a, over, get like a fade in and fade out, so, you will see like three videos playing in the same time with fade in and fade out and all that. And of course you will get all that uh, rendered in the final product. Now, that's, so that's the idea. Basically you have... Uh, yeah. and so this, this is running on a, a Chromebook Pixel. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this is running on a Chromebook Pixel, right? Yes. yes. Uh, so this is oh, one, of the new, one of the new Chromebooks that was announced, uh, well, it was announced some time back, but they've, uh, they talked about it yesterday during the keynote. Um, but you could, what, what's the, the theoretical minimum machine you could run something like this on? Uh, we are we are using. Can I use this? Yeah. Sure. We are using. Uh, uh, we are using. We have a lot of education users, so they are using the Samsung Chromebooks, which are three hundred dollars or something like this. Mm -hmm. So this works very well on those machines as well. So for this particular web version that we have right now, it works on basically any machine. Obviously, it has to have some sort of video capabilities, some uh, of graphic capabilities, but not that much. Right. You know. Uh, yeah, if you're gonna start doing like a lot of layers and a lot of stuff on a low-end uh, uh, Chromebook, it will probably be a problem. 
but you usually don't use for that. So in education, they use maybe maybe some, something a bit more simple. Okay. So, uh, and you, you talked a little bit earlier before, of course, being that uh, we're at a Google event, uh, they like HTML5 here. Yeah. You guys are, right, right. So uh, this is this is built in Flash currently, but you were showing me down here, uh, this, this or is it this one, or no, this one? So uh, this is the this is the uh, what is this the the Google Nexus 10 right and then and this is the the Pixel and they're both running uh, in Chrome HTML5 version of Wii Video. The only difference between these two is that here is running on an, uh, is running online so it's running on our on our web server so it's online content that you see it's just as you see here but HTML5. Difference is that this is Chrome packaged app. It's a new concept from from the from uh, from the Chrome team which allows you to package an app and make it feel like it's installed local and have everything like local. So you can, their strategy for the Chrome package app is to actually have offline first. So the first thing that you have to think about your app is that users will not always get a uh, connection. So uh, obviously somewhere in the future they might get Wi-Fi and then in, well, when all the data should be pushed to the cloud and just get in there. Uh, so right now the code base for these two they are completely is completely similar. I mean not completely, but 95% uh, similar. The difference is, is is coming from how we fetch medias. So this is using our REST APIs to fetch the medias, while these are using the Chrome Media Galleries API and a standard HTML file uh, file uh, discovery to get URLs for these videos and actually being able to play. And of course it's touch enabled because it's a Chromebook Pixel. So yeah, so I can I can go ahead and do stuff like this. You know I can. I can add videos to it. Yeah, you see? I can. I can trim just as I did on the on the main edit, on the flash editor. I can just trim to, to something that looks nice and everything. I can add an image in between and uh, I just make it a bit shorter because standard is six seconds. Uh, and just add some sound. Fortunately, you're probably not going to be able to hear the sound, but uh, it's it's there. <laughs> Okay, so you, you you play that back and it plays seamlessly back. So this is completely HTML5, completely running uh, running in the browser and everything like that. So I think, frankly, this is the future. Uh, what I've seen around here is that most companies are going towards this. You know, uh, what's helping us a lot is the is the offline is the uh, on the web package app is that we can hide a bit this kind of upload. Uh, a lot of users when you go to directly here, it's kind of hard to have content because you have to upload it first and a lot of things. So a lot of people get lost. So what we did on the on the web editors is offering clip art content uh, or something that we can we can offer to the user so that it it gets them started with something. You know, here you won't have the problem because you will have your own content already there. You know, otherwise you won't be installing a video editor. Sure. Too, yeah. So uh, let's switch tracks a little bit. Uh, one of the things of the month uh, with uh, over at Silicon Angle is hyperscale. Yeah. We're talking, uh, we're drilling down on the different public clouds that are in, uh, that are around right now. And uh, of course, Amazon is the first top of mind. Comes to everybody. Uh, everybody in the uh, the enterprise is is I wouldn't say running scared, but you know, companies like EMC and NetApp are becoming aware that they need to have an answer. SAP, Oracle, all these have need to have an answer to. Amazon's growing dominance. Uh, what OpenStack Foundation exists is for everyone to kind of band together. And then of course you've got Google's cloud. Uh, so uh, let's talk about your architecture and your, your choices that you guys made uh, in, in, de in developing this. Which cloud did you guys go with? Uh, we are AVS, uh, okay. most of our services there. We are using AVS even for, for rendering and all that stuff. Uh, for storage and for all that. Is, is there an alternative uh, if you guys if you guys wanted to? I mean, like, so did you identify or did you uh, did you evaluate other alternatives or is this just the only answer at the time when you guys went to market? Basically, the, the only proper answer that we got at the time, and it was uh, the, uh, it was something that was offering us the, the right the right uh, set of tools to, to do our job cor correctly. And uh, yeah, it was not that that big of a decision. Kind of, kind of a no-brainer then. Yeah, it was not kind of a no-brainer, you know. Well, if you if you're doing it all over today, what would be your options? I think it will be the same for the, for the main reason that I, I can show you that here sure. is that is that we are importing from these guys and a lot of these guys are are on our AVS, which means that if you're importing here, you get a gigabit uh, cloud to cloud connection rather than moving from another cloud. Right, so right. It makes complete sense for us to be on the same page with everybody else. It could be that if that wasn't the case, I don't know, it could have been different. Yeah. Well, you know, it uh, it's hard hard to, hard to stop a rolling stone coming down the mountain, so. So far, it has been. Uh, I think it was a good experience for us. So I don't know why we would. Uh, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Well, it's interesting stuff, and and I know we're going to be evaluating this because you know we do video and we look at everything. So uh, I, I thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. It's a it's a fantastic product, and we'll be back uh, to the show floor here at Google I/O 2013 with more coverage. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.